In this episode, we're going to talk all about frequency, about raising your frequency and what might be lowering your frequency. So stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. Welcome to the Soul Alignment Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Angie, and I'm inviting you to explore the depths of self-sabotage, limiting mindsets, and the beliefs that hinder our progress in life. Through intuitive messages I receive from my spirit team, I share profound insights to help you live authentically and break free from these limitations. Join me now as we uncover all the keys to living your best life. Welcome back. My name is Angie and I am your soul alignment mentor, bringing you intuitive messages from my spirit team to help you align with your most authentic and highest self. So if you've been around the spiritual community for a while, you've heard about frequency and vibration and and in your energy field and how things might raise your frequency or lower your frequency. And today I want to give a different take about energy and frequencies, because I think what happens a lot is that we forget that our human programming and understanding can be combined with our spiritual practice, which actually causes us to disconnect from our inner truth and our inner wisdom of what really can help our energy shift into a new frequency in which allows us to be more connected with our higher self and our spiritual um, truths, maybe even our spiritual team um, or spirit guides who we might be working with. And the reason this is coming up in my awareness is I've noticed this a lot within the spiritual community for several years. I think I started to notice it um, maybe around four years ago when I was comparing some of my old religious background teachings to the spiritual community. And as I was moving more and more into the awakening process and aligning more and more with um, understanding the truths of spirituality, which truth is not really a great word to describe it, um, but the understanding of the wisdom of the universe, I guess I could say, is I saw a lot of the same things I saw in religion being practiced in spirituality. Now, I am not saying that some of the things that we engage in or we do to connect ourselves with spirit or align ourselves with our higher self or um, practice, you know, connecting inward. These are all tools that we have as humans to help us do um and connect with our higher self and our spirit team. However, sometimes what happens is we add the element of fear into these practices. And that's kind of what happens in religion. A lot of times we come into a practice, a spiritual practice, thinking that we're seeking something maybe outside of us to help us with something. Um, For example, in religion, the uh, element of prayer or asking for God for support, we we're actually giving our power away in that moment. We are looking for something outside of ourselves to bring peace or comfort to us in some way. And when we're seeking something outside of ourselves, we're always going to fall short because everything that we need is already within us. And that is exactly what, if we were to follow the original teaching teachings, of of Jesus, he actually pointed us inward. He encouraged us to not seek the kingdom outside of us, but to seek the kingdom within. And so in that fear-based programming, we, we come to what we would call God and desire for something outside of us to come and fix something going on inside of us or around us. And a lot of the things that are taught within, you know, I'm talking specifically about evangelical Christian because that's where I spend a lot of my time um, in the church. And a lot of the things that are taught about connecting with God or connect or uh, connecting with your spirituality are based out of fear of how good you can be or uh, how much you're doing for God or if you're engaging in sinful activities or not. And I think what happens sometimes is when people deconstruct or they leave behind an old belief, they will try to recreate that same 
um, energy of fear within a new way. Now, this is completely unconscious sometimes. It's very subtle. Our human mind and um, belief system is based around fear often because we are taught to be fearful since children. We are, everything around us is tr attempting to uh, teach us in some way to protect ourselves. Like from the time a child, you know, is playing with a ball and it goes across the street and the child runs across the street, there's fear that comes up because a child could be hit by a car. Now that's a relevant fear. That's something that to be aware of. However, the reality of it is, is if there is awareness of what's around them and they're staying connected to themselves and centered, then making a choice to go after the ball when no car is coming, that's not going to harm the child. It is simply the act of, you know, doing something without first being centered and thinking about what you're doing, which is why we have to train children to make choices sometimes out of fear. However, that fear becomes one of our the elements in which we do a lot of our behaviors and actions out of. And we can recreate that same kind of fear in all of our the areas of life. And spirituality could be one of those. And so if we're going into our spiritual practice with the idea that I have to be something, I have to earn something, I have to create this ritual or do this certain thing to open up the connection with spirit or to connect with my higher self or to center or whatever it might be, we could possibly doing, be doing that out of the element of fear, which fear out of all the frequencies is one of the lowest frequencies. So if we're engaging in something, we have to be careful about why we're engaging in it and what the belief is behind it that we are using it for. Are we using it to get something outside of ourselves to work for us or to manifest something? Now, if we think that that thing is what causes us to be able to attract these things, then we're putting our faith and our belief in that thing instead of in ourselves and understanding that the energy we hold within the frequency that we hold within is what manifests outward. And so instead of giving our power away to something outside of us, we have to bring our power back within our heart, come back to the kingdom within the I am energy, the source energy that we are created out of. And when we release the fear that we have to do something or we have to perform something or be something in order to gain wisdom or gain connection with spirit or raise in our frequency, then we can just use these things as ways to basically to help our flesh, help our ego to feel calm and safe as we're in it. It's, it's basically um, an outward expression of what's inside. So this is coming up in my awareness for a few reasons. And this is something I have seen a lot in the spiritual community as well is um, things that you do or engage in that might lower your frequency. And one of those, th this comes up in my awareness because I recently was scrolling so through social media and I came across a post where somebody was talking about how drinking coffee lowers your frequency. And, you know, I, I don't want to say it doesn't because if that's your belief, then that's what will happen. And this is where we have to come into the understanding that our belief is very powerful. What we believe we manifest. And so as I was tuning into this particular thing, I started to realize that we do this with all things. We give our power away to something outside of ourselves thinking that thing is going to influence our frequency. That thing is going to cause it to raise or lower. But the reality of it is, is that thing doesn't have anything to do with our frequency. We are the one in charge of our energy. We are the one in charge of our thoughts. No one can cause me to think anything unless I allow them to cause me to think it. Unless I have already engaged in that thought, then somebody outside of me could say something and that provokes a trigger within me. And then that cycles into an energy because of the thought I have within me, because of the belief I have within me. And so what we have to be careful about is labeling things outside of us as high frequency or low frequency. Now, 
I do want to emphasize that there are things that you can engage in that could lower your frequency, but this isn't because that has power over you. It's because of how it creates a belief and mindset within you and how it alters your thinking, how it creates a new thinking within you. And one of these things I'm, I'm, you know, might be referring to is like drinking alcohol. Now, having a glass of wine or a drink once in a while, that is not necessarily going to lower your frequency. Your belief that it will, it will absolutely lower your frequency. But if you are using this as a tool to numb or you are engaging it in an addictive behavior or you are adding it into um, some kind of uh, daily routine, and that is a reliance of yours, like you rely on that thing outside of you, that is taking away from your frequency, which is lowering your frequency. So anytime you give your, your power away to something outside of you, that is that is what's going to lower your frequency because you are not the one centered and managing your energy. You're giving your energy to something else to manage your energy. So if I think I have to have a drink to relax every night, my power goes to that drink, not to myself, not to centering into my heart. And that is why meditation is such a beneficial tool to add into your daily life because that, it, that can be you tuning back into your heart instead of tuning into something outside of you to bring you comfort and to help you connect back into your own higher self and your spiritual essence. And so we have to be careful about understanding that the belief system that we hold about things around us really does make an impact on our energy, but it's not that particular thing that we're engaging in that might lower our frequency. Now, when you have shifted in your frequency, this is something I may have shared in another video, but I will share this again. And it's uh, just an example that my spirit team has given me to help explain the frequency shifts that we might go through. And um, this one kind of is able to understand why you might not engage in certain things when you shift in your frequency and when you, what we would call rise in your frequency and why you're not engaging in those things anymore and why they could lower your frequency when you re-engage with them. And so the example is, is if you have been around a, a certain social group for a while and this social group is focused on you know, partying and drinking and, and getting together and going out to the bars and, and maybe you all listen to rap music, you know, nothing against rap music, I think is wonderful, but that's what that culture is. Everybody in that culture is engaging in that same activity. That's what you all have in common. And so your frequency is all going to be aligned with that same thing. So as you continue to be around this setting, your frequency aligns with that setting. Now, say suddenly something happens in your life and you decide, you know what? I don't think that this is for me anymore. I'm not sure I want to engage in this behavior or listen to this music anymore. So you start to work on yourself. You start to heal. You start to see yourself differently. And the things around you at that time maybe aren't doing that. Maybe the people aren't doing that. And in, in the activities you were engaging in, those don't change in their frequency, but you do. So if you were to see a dial on a radio station, if you've been listening to that one station, you know, all your life and then suddenly decide, I'm going to go listen to country music. I'm going to go lion dancing instead of going to the club and, you know, Around, around the rap music. And so that frequency is going to shift and you're going to start aligning with new things around you. And you're no longer going to relate with that old energy. Now that's still something that you learned from and something that you engaged in. And there will be a memory in your energy and in your body about that time. And so this is why sometimes when you start to work to move away with some away from something that might not be beneficial, it's easy to go back to it because that feeling that it gave you at that time allowed you to feel safe and connected in some kind of way. It allowed you to feel connected to yourself. It gave you the ability to feel included and seen in some way. And so the ego will always look for something to bring you back to where you felt safe. 
Now, that is why when you start to heal, you have to pay attention to the things you engage in because our energy has memory and that memory wants to take us back to safety and that safety is through the ego. But this is why we, as you continue to heal and you, t you start aligning with new things around you, you may not want to engage with that old thing energy anymore. You might not want to engage with those same people. You might not want to engage in that same activity. And that is because it will alter your energy and shift you into that old energy that you were in. Not that it was higher or lower. It was just not who you, it's just who you were and who you're not now. And so as you start to align with this new frequency, you start to attract those things within that frequency. And so this could be considered raising your frequency in some kind of way. Now you might be in this new frequency for a while and you might stay here and learn from it for a while and then suddenly shift again and, and things start to waken up again. And then, so you're going to change the channel again. You're going to turn the dial up again. And each time you shift in your frequency, the things around you start to keep shifting and you, and you become less and less um, aligned with it or resonate with it. And so you know that at this certain frequency, I engaged with these certain activities. So, you know, I will use some personal examples of my own self. Like I used to be very religious. I used to go to church every Sunday. I was at church several days a week. I, I engaged in all kinds of things. But as I woke up, as I had my awakening, as I started to connect with my higher self and my spirit team, and I started to have more internal understanding of who I was outside of those beliefs, I no longer resonated with those. And trying to put myself in that setting now feels very uncomfortable and it doesn't feel aligned with who I am. So I am not going to go into that setting because it's not who I am anymore. The same thing is with um, if you've read my book, Leaf Lessons, you might know this. Um, I used to engage in alcohol quite a bit. Like I would use alcohol to numb and I would drink it. And, and for a while I would drink until I would black out. And so that element of alcohol became part of what made me feel safe at that time. It made me feel connected to myself because it helped me to let go of some of the other things in my life that I, that were causing me to feel pain. And so in order for me to heal, I had to let go of that element of alcohol and I had to start feeling my pain. I had to start allowing myself to be where I was without something hindering that, without something numbing that away. And as I healed, as I awoken, as I let go of some of the things that were causing me internal pain and I was able to see that I did not resonate with that activity anymore. And that was not something I wanted to engage in. And it's not because I think it's completely horrible. It's because it's not who I am anymore. It's not where I resonate. And so when we stop re putting fear into things and we start seeing them as um, an energy of resonating with me or not resonating with me, we can let go of the fear-based belief that that thing outside of us is causing our frequency to change. If I had a drink tomorrow, if I went out with my friends and had a glass of wine or a drink tomorrow, that one glass of wine or whatever I have is not going to lower my frequency unless I believe it will. And so it's not that I I don't have a desire to engage in that anymore. I don't even have a desire to really have a drink with a friend because I just don't feel my best when I do it, but it's not giving my power away to something outside of myself. So we have to be careful about what we believe and how we engage in things and not necessarily believing that thing we're engaging in is giving us a higher frequency or a lower frequency because everything within us is what hires and lowers our frequency. It all resides within. Everything we need is within. As within so without, as above, so below. All of it is connected. So the way you resonate within is the things you align with outside of yourself. And so instead of doing things out of fear or fearing engaging in something that might lower your frequency, if you have that fear that it does, then you absolutely need to not 
uh, engage with that thing because it will lower your frequency because you have a belief that it will. So you have to be careful about your belief system and why you believe something. And if you have something in your life like this, I encourage you to take a moment and step back and, and evaluate. Why is this something that I believe is going to cause me fear? Why is, or why is this going to lower my frequency? And if you come to the conclusion that it just doesn't align with you, then that's fine. It doesn't have to be anything other than it doesn't align with me. If it's something that you believe is going to raise your frequency, why do you think it's going to raise your frequency? What is the activity that raises your frequency? And, and, and how do you think that's going to happen? Because if you believe it will, it will. But don't give your power to that. Don't believe that that thing or that uh, ritual or that object or the crystal is what gives you the power. You give it power and then it resonates back to you. So it's not that you're, you're getting something from something outside of yourself. You're putting your energy and belief and power into it and then it's reflecting back to you. Nothing outside of you has power unless you give it power. So believe that you are source energy, God, you are the I am and everything resides within you and everything outside of you, every ritual, every tool, all of it is just a reflection of you and you give it the meaning, you give it the power. It doesn't give you the things that you desire. I hope this made sense. <laughs> um, if not, I would love for you to leave a comment and um, or maybe even give me insight on something else you would like me to share in one of my videos. And uh, again, um, I want to invite you to come and join my live channeling membership. Every month I get on a Zoom call with multiple people and I give you a chance to ask my spirit team questions directly. Um, that will either be through channeling or me just tuning in and giving you the message that I hear them saying. And I would love to have you with us and support you in that. And then as you come, um, you also help support the community of raising the consciousness as well. Um, because the more things gather together, the more the energy is that helps um, us all align and continue on our path towards our higher self and connecting with the truth of wisdom that's already within us. So I wish you all the best day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. I send you all the universal love. Namaste.